jog through practice here at the UC Health Training Center today for day seven of training camp. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in for this episode of Broncos Now. I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and today marked the first full week of practice here in training camp. It was a lighter workload today, though, after having two physical practices the past couple days. This is something head coach Nathaniel Hackett likes to do to keep the players fresh and to allow their bodies to rest. The slower tempo not only allows for the players to make more plays, but the guys are able to get more mental reps in as well. Outside linebacker Malik Reed spoke to the media today and gave his thoughts on these types of practices. It's huge. Uh, we know that it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know what I mean? Uh, you get through the preseason. You got three preseason games. Uh, you know, the rest of the training camp practices. And then, you know, when you hit, hit the season, you want to you wanna be fresh. You know what I mean? You want to be, be ready to go. You don't want to be know, going in with lingering injuries and, you know, whether it's a hamstring, you know, some soft tissue injuries and stuff like that. So I feel like these days kind of help with those type of things and, and getting the body ready to not only be prepared for those preseason games, but getting ready for the season as well. Tight end Albert Okawebenom also said he's really appreciative of these jog through days. He says it allows everyone to come out tomorrow feeling great and ready for a really competitive practice, which will help as tomorrow the guys will be back in full pads. A much needed day for the players following a tough practice yesterday in which both Tim Patrick and Demarie Crockett suffered season ending knee injuries. But practice must go on and head coach Nathaniel Hackett said that everyone was a true professional out there today. You all know that that's, you know, stuff happens in this game. Um, and it's something about uh, how you're going to bounce back from that. I mean, because that's going to happen throughout the league. Um, throughout the whole year, you know, whether you win a game, lose a game, you can never get too high, you can never get too low. I mean, that's just the facts of this game and how long it is. But, you know, obviously, you know, we talked about it and it's something that we, we're we not going to hide from. Um, we're going to support and love them and, and be there for them. And, uh, you know, hey, we still got to move on. We got a job to do. While they will certainly miss those guys, Coach Hackett said it gives someone else an opportunity to step up. Especially in that zone, in, in, in the red zone, to have the opportunity to be able to make some touchdowns, uh, utilize some different people. I mean, that's what we're going to have to do. And in that area, you always want everybody to, to have to cover, you know, the whole field and all 11 guys, or not all 11 guys, I guess, but all the skilled guys. So. Um, it'll be exciting to see who is going to step up, but somebody's going to have to. Plus, the Broncos signed a free agent running back Max Borgie Wednesday afternoon. Max participated in rookie minicamp back in June as a tryout player. He played at Washington State and is from Arvada, Colorado. Now it's time to dive a little bit deeper into practice. Joining me here in the podcast studio, as always, is Broncos lead writer Eric Dalala. And today we are joined by a very special guest. Phil Milani. Phil, so nice of you to join us today. Thank you for finally having me on your show. I uh, <laughs> heard so much about the show. I kind of felt a little bit left out. No. But I'm happy to be here today. I know. I feel like the gang's back together. Yeah. It's kind of like Sydney and the neutral zone together. <laughs> who let this, oh, no. who let who this let, guy in here? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's exactly Eric. Well, let's get right to it. Okay, Another okay, sorry. jog through practice today. Eric, I know we've touched on this before in the show. So, Phil, what do you think about these lighter days? What, what value do you see in them? I like them. I think that at this point in camp, it's really more about the mental reps and mm -hmm. being able to just learn this offense, learn this defense, and go through it out there on the field. I don't think that they really necessarily need to be banging each other every single day. You know, uh, you definitely want to get calloused before the start of the regular season, but there's three preseason games to do that, and there's the rest of camp. I agree, and especially since we've already had a couple of injuries, nice to take a day off following a day like that. Eric, I know we've talked a lot about who might step up in Tim Patrick's place. Coach Hackett said today on the podium that really any one of our tight ends could certainly fit in that role. You know, Not only are they bigger bodies, but they can also run. So, Eric, are they the key to replacing Tim, or what do you think? Yeah, I think they could be for two reasons. One, in the red zone, the Broncos have to figure out who's going to replace Tim Patrick's production because he's had – eight red zone touchdowns over the last three years. Mm -hmm. It's tied for the most with Noah Fant, who's obviously in Seattle now. Then you've got four for Cortland Sutton. The running backs each have three each, but then no other player has more than one red zone touchdown. So it's kind of up in the air who's going to fill that vo void. And Albert O, Greg Dulcich, they seem like prime candidates because not only are they big bodies, like you mentioned, but they can run. They have that speed. And so, um, you know, if a guy like Albert O can get a linebacker, kind of spread out from the line of scrimmage, that's an advantage for him, and you hope that turns into points in the red zone. 
We mentioned Greg Dulcich. You know, he's slowly but surely getting worked back in, you know, doing a little bit more day by day. Phil, what do you really like about his skill set, and what do you think he'll add to this offense once he's really back? Well, I, I'm just happy that he's back out there because I think yeah. for a, a rookie, it's really important to be able to get these reps out on the field. Uh, I, I like this guy's story. I mean, he was a walk-on at UCLA. He was a high school wide receiver, so he has some of those natural abilities as a wideout. And I think that he is a, a, a matchup uh, – you know, he's he's going to be able to beat a linebacker with his speed. He's going to be bigger than most cornerbacks out there. So I think that he's going to have the advantage in a lot of different situations. For me, though, it's about him earning Russell Wilson's trust. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I throw the ball to this guy and he's going to be where he needs to be? And is he going to come down with it? That's important to me. That's what he's got to be doing right now because, you know, like you see Russ ho host these things in the offseason. Greg Dulcich was not there. Yeah. Albert O was there. All the rest of the wideouts were there. So you, you, I think he's just got to earn that trust. And part of that might be he had to stay back with the rookies and be a part of this rookie program. So, but but he missed some of that time. It's not like I'm not trying to dog him for missing that. I'm just saying right. uh, he missed that time. So he's got to earn that trust. He's got to get that timing down. He's got to learn this offense. And if he can do that, I think that he could be a major contributor as a rookie. Do you think maybe missing some of that time will hurt him not being able to, you know, gain that chemistry with Russell? Over it's the possible. Weeks? Yeah. I think more than anything, it's just knowing the offense. I mean, from what we've heard from other guys, it's that this is a mix of a Russell Wilson offense a Nathaniel Hackett offense, and it's super complicated. So not only is it super complicated, but he's also coming from a college system where, you know, maybe it's not so many checks, not so much. He doesn't have to know so many things. So even though he was playing with Chip Kelly, who runs a pretty complicated system there. So uh, I just think if he knows where he's supposed to be, I think he'll earn that trust over the course of the year. And uh, hopefully he's ready to go and can get these reps in the preseason. Well, let's talk about the defense for a little bit here. You know, one group of guys we haven't really touched on yet or a lot in camp um, are the edge rushers. You know, we did talk about Baron Browning a couple days ago, Eric, a little bit. He's had a pretty solid camp. But what about Bradley Chubb, Nick Bonito? What have you seen from them? Yeah, I mean, Bradley's obviously been really good. Mm -hmm. He's looked like the guy that he looked like in 2018, in 2020. I think he's everything you expect him to be. He might be the key to this defense, as good as Pat Sertan and Justin Simmons are. If Bradley Chubb doesn't stay healthy or he's not an elite guy, I think it's going to be hard for this defense to get the pressure they need. You know, I don't think defensive line is their deepest position, and so they're going to need that pressure from their outside linebackers to help out. So he's the key in my mind. But then you look at that next group, Randy Gregory, is he able to get healthy and get on the field in time for week one? That's probably the biggest remaining question mark about this defense. That's going to be really interesting to watch over the coming weeks. And then Baron Browning, Nick Benito, Malik Reed, Jonathan Cooper, I view all those guys kind of grouped in to the same sort of uh, – tier of guy and you're going to see in the preseason who stand that who stands out who's able to earn a role because there's probably not room for all six of those guys on this roster and so you know does somebody get treated does somebody get cut do you try to sneak one of the younger guys to the practice squad I mean it just it's going to be a really intense competition there and you know I, I think that Malik Reed is a guy that you know everyone's excited about Baron Browning everyone's excited about Nick Benito obviously the two starters in Chubb and Gregory Malik Reed might be forgotten about a little bit, but he has the lead in sacks over the last three years. He's been the most productive guy, the most consistent guy. And so I don't think it's easy to just count him out either. So it's going to be really interesting to watch. I don't know that there's a clear answer of who's going to emerge there. Certainly a lot of things to figure out over the next couple of weeks before the start of the season. Last one is for you, Phil. You know, since we haven't had you on the show yet, I want to know, you know, who's had your eye at camp so far? Who's really stood out to you? Well, I think that there's the guys that everybody's been talking about. Pat Sertan, obviously, mm -hmm. looks like he's primed to become a pro bowl or an all pro, uh, just maybe one of the top three quarterbacks in the entire NFL. Uh, one of the young guys who's stood out is Montreal Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, his speed uh, has really been on display a little bit during camp. Well, one guy who he might not even make the team, but he's sort of stood out of my eyes is Jonathan Kongbo, oh. uh, a, a pass rusher from Tennessee, played in uh, Canada for a little bit. Eric just mentioned how much the competition at pass rusher, how intense it's going to be. So oh. 
I don't know if he's going to make it, but uh, he's a guy who looks like he has all the physical traits and he's been working hard out there every day, it seems like. And uh, I don't know. It would be something that would be kind of a cool story if you were able to somehow make this team or at least hang around and be on the practice squad. Maybe uh, it could be a special teams contributor. So we'll, we'll just have to see what if he could carve out a role for himself here. But so a guy who uh, nobody's really been talking about, but uh, seems to have been having some pretty good days so far through uh, a week of camp, essentially. I like that pick, Phil. Very underrated pick. I like it. Thank you. I like to bring something to the table <laughs> that nobody else is uh, able to do. And you certainly did today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I could be back on. <laughs> of course you can. Any day, Phil, you are welcome. Thanks, Sid. Well, we're back to full pads tomorrow. Phil, so nice having you. Eric, appreciate your time as always. Thanks, Sid. And following practice today, I had a chance to catch up with running backs coach Tyrone Wheatley. Take a listen. Coach, day seven of training camp in the books. How has the first full week of practice been for you so far? For me, it's been great. For the guys, a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, getting back acclimated to the um, altitude, getting their camp legs up under them, uh, relearning the system. Uh, but all in all, good week. Another jog through type of practice today. What do you like about these slower tempo days? Slower tempo days takes you know the pressure off the legs, but put the pressure on the mind, right? So now we go from lower to upper, and it's all mental. Uh, shouldn't be no excuses for any mess ups, but but like you say, you slow it down, give them time to think about it and process. Uh, also go over the mistakes from the week one, come back, put it all together, and now you're it's really, really, really just tapping into the mental aspect of the game, the finite details, right? Uh, the muscle memory, the body memory should be there, but now just putting mind to feet and making sure it all mesh and it looks good. Definitely a much needed practice after yesterday's tough practice. Obviously, as you know, Tamari Crockett will miss the season due to his ACL injury. Have you had a chance to catch up with him? How are his spirits? His spirits are up. You know, Crock has always been a up tempo guy. He's been he was basically our spiritual leader in the room. And um, so when you will go talk to him, he was like, Coach, I just have to eat this and focus now on getting ready. And uh, he asked me for his uh, scripts and and all the plays to get ready. So he, he's he's upbeat. He's ready to go. And uh, he was having a phenomenal camp. I know we're all hoping for a speedy recovery for him. But in regards to, you know, Javante and Melvin, what have you seen from them so far this camp? What impresses you the most about that duo? I think a lot what impresses really is off the field and, and what, what goes in between them. And what that means is the chemistry. They, they, they have a really good chemistry. They feed off one another. They really talk. And there's no animosity. There's nothing in between them. So it's a really good mesh. And the one thing that I really, really, truly like about them, they're helping one another. And I think that's, that's a good deal. They, have, they both know there's a difference in between skill set. You know, Javante has a little skill set that, uh, you know, that Melvin doesn't have and vice versa. Yeah. And so they converse back and forth and try and say, hey, well, I saw this. What did you see? So they converse back and forth, and they lean on one another. And that's the greatest thing right there, the chemistry. Because without the chemistry, you know, oil and more, water doesn't mix, right? right? Water and electricity doesn't mix. Uh -huh. But right now, I got a pretty good, I got a really good harmony in the room. And, and, and that's the, the culture, is, it sets everything. And, and those two are the top right now. And they're setting a the culture, and they're setting a the harmony, and they're setting a the room. And, and right now, that's a great breeding ground for success. Well, that's great to hear, Coach. Last one for you. Just what are your overall thoughts on the offense so far this camp as the, you know, they continue to work on mastering this scheme? Yeah, I think right now offense is always going to be, and I hate using this term, yeah. but offense is always going to be a little bit behind defense. It's for the very reason we talked about the walkthrough, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little, there are more calls, there are more things to tie together. But I tell you what, these guys came out of OTAs looking really good, um, putting the muscle memory to mind. It's looking good. And right now, it's just sharpening up the details. And now the guys are, we're in a phase of what I call owning it. They're making it their own. Even though the concepts and things are together, but now you're starting to see guys put their own little touch and flair to it. And that's that right there is when you're starting to see things gel. And I, I like where we are right now. Well, looking forward to seeing this offense and the running backs, specifically the rest of camp. Coach, appreciate your time. Oh, as am I. Thank you very much. Now it's time to take a look at today's injury update. DJ Jones is back out on the field today, but only stretched with the team. He did not participate in the rest of practice. Kendall Hinton also didn't practice today. Coach Hackett said they're just making sure his knee is good. Other than that, no changes from yesterday. Tim Patrick, Demarie Crockett, Tom Compton, K1 Williams, and Tyree Cleveland did not practice, and Billy Turner and Randy Gregory remain on the PUP list. Plus, tight end Greg Dulcich is still not full go, but has been doing more and more each day.
that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Thanks for tuning in for another day of camp. I hope to see you all right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for another episode tomorrow evening and for day eight. I'll see you all then.